Okay, I just want to give you some review, uh, final review thoughts about the Sopwith Camel uh, from Hangar 9 uh, after flying it. Uh, or after the maiden flight, uh, you could see I kind of bent the landing gear here a little bit, the landing struts, uh, after some rough landings. Um, that's probably because of me being just a beginner pilot, you know. I've only been flying for... Um, about two and a half years so still still learning this is definitely not a beginner plane this is an intermediate to advanced it's a big plane too um, so keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting it the other thing is it's really sensitive to the where you have the weight at on the plane I actually put the stuff that I the camera that I put on the back to help balance it I thought I was going to get a CG of around three and a half inches turned out that um, it liked to CG closer to like three inches so uh, that didn't work out so well the camera fell off and actually it, f it flew better with that the, the CG around three inches so um, the manual I think says to use a CG from the leading edge of the wing of about four inches um, another thing I found was that the ailerons don't actually if you move them down they move nice uh, if you move them up they actually get kind of get stuck and this is the way they're they're attached I think others have complained about this so uh, the, the way to fix this is really to take the hinges off and actually redo them so you get better movement but I would I think that probably the movement that you get out of here if you just want to try it out, it's probably sufficient. Um, you know, you get at least a half inch there. Um, if you really wanted to get by, you could probably get by with that. Uh, another thing is they don't really make this plane anymore. So getting parts, uh, looks like you can still get parts for them, but um, just keep that in mind. Um, you might not want to invest too much in this. Okay, so for a prop, I have a 16 by 10 prop. Uh, it felt like it was adequate, um, but you know, it just didn't give me the maximum power. I probably could have gone with, with more. Um, on this setup, I uh, checked the um, the amperage on it, and it was pulling about uh, only 40 amps. Um, and this is a 70 amp uh, ESC, red brick ESC from Hobby King. So I could have done more. So I'm actually thinking about putting this Turner G 18 by 8 prop on here. A nice wooden prop. Um, you know, it'll look a little bit nicer and see how it goes. Here's the first test. So that's the first test with the 16x10 prop, the plastic prop. Let's uh, try another test with the wooden prop. Okay, we got the uh, Turn G 18x8 prop on here. We're going to give it a try and uh, see what the uh, meter tells us for the uh, amperage. So. Uh, same setup as before, just a different propeller. Whoa, that was a lot of power. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what the thrust was on that, but it definitely was a lot. It it looks like it's 56 amps and almost 1,300 watts. That was a lot of power. <laughs> it was definitely a lot of power because it was uh, blowing everything off the table here. It was crazy. So that should be uh, that should definitely be plenty. Okay, here's a look of the look at the box here. This thing came in. It's all nicely packaged. 
I did find out that I was missing some parts, so I had to uh, actually go and uh, order some to get it completed, but it wasn't too bad. So one thing you can do with this plane is you can either make it gas or electric. So they're just showing you that on the side of the box here. You can do uh, glow fuel or you can go with the electric uh, 0.60 size electric power motor. And you can get the Ultra Coat covering to go with this plane here if you need to touch it up. Okay, I just want to show you the uh, setup underneath the cow here. This is an idea that I got from Mustang Fever on RC Universe. Um, it's got the battery, two battery compartments in the uh, front of the plane uh, right beside the motor. Um, I'll show you how that works here. So it's got a piece of Velcro that wraps around this thing and the batteries just slide up here into this compartment. And I did this because I wanted this weight as much weight forward as possible. Um, if you don't do this, you pretty much have you get you end up getting stuck with um, putting a weight box there and up in the front, which I hate adding dead weight to the plane. But basically, your two batteries go there, up into that compartment. Um, the motor sits in the middle. And then there's a Y connector underneath here. I don't know if you can see that, uh, where the, um, the two bat batteries are connected in parallel. Now, these are Turner G uh, Nanotech batteries, uh, 3,000 3, milliamp hour, six cells, uh, 25 to 50 C discharge. Um, nice good quality quality batteries um, so there you can see the um, two battery connectors there on the back on the bottom side of the cowl that uh, this connects to so if you look up you can see up into the um, battery compartment and I actually have the um, piece of velcro here I have a battery monitor that I like to use so I'll, I'll uh, connect that there uh, to monitor the the batteries while I'm flying and it will beep at me if it gets low on power. The motor here is a Turn G G60 300 kV motor. It's a .60 size motor. It weighs um, about 350 grams and it's uh, 50 millimeters in diameter, 59 millimeters in length, just the can. So um, came with the this uh, adapter for the front for the prop so uh, so far it seems to work pretty good I'll probably end up upgrading it to a spinner okay so let's take a look inside the uh, underneath the pilot here, underneath this hatch inside so you can see what's in here. You can see my servos, um, my uh, receiver there, um, got my red brick 70 amp ESC in there. I've got a BEC also because it doesn't have one. I think that's a 5 amp BEC. Um, most of my stuff I get from Hobby King. And this is my dad's plane. Say hi, Dad. Hi, Leah. And he built this plane, and he went at an air show. This is a $200 plane, and it's very expensive. He's lucky he won it. And so here it is, and it's very, very delicate. Because as you see, you can you can see the lines of the ribs, and 
even the slightest hard touch by your fingernail could puncture through this and then the whole plane would be gone. See? And this is a soup with camel 60 and you can use all different types of stuff. You can use glow fuel and electric power. I think glow fuel is going to be pretty cool because it'll glow. And batteries, it's awesome because you can just solder and hook up wires. And as you see here that all these parts move and um Okay, so here's the waddle um, heel, and the waddle, when it turns with the shovel hidden in the plane, it turns the tail wheel too on ground. And this also helps move the plane in the air when it's um, flying. The elevator moves up and down to help it keep balance, and then the ailerons help it um, turn left and right. And so this is the inside and it's dark in there and then this little guy, this little pilot guy sits up on the plane and shoots people and drive. I can't imagine doing both at the same time. That'd be very hard. See, it fits in just like that, and there's notches that hold it in, so when they turn upside down, the pilot doesn't go flying out of the plane and lose control. Yeah, and um, as you see, we have wooden struts, and um, they hold up the wings, and then we have more wooden struts over here that help hold up the top of the wing so it doesn't collapse on the pilot. And as you see, it has upper windows there, um, so that the pot, so this guy can see through there um, and see any upcoming planes that would most likely bomb him, and so he could swift away. And this is the motor mount, and it's very special because it has this motor, and it really just, it really works great and as you see the holes they have holes in it and um and it's velcroed and it's screwed and it has a lot of stuff on there to keep it um in and so yeah it's very cool and um and these are the wheels and they're very um large and um and they help stop the plane, uh, well they help it when it's landed and taking off by ro making it roll. And so here's the big propeller that we're going to be, that we're going to be using. It's very big, as you can see, and um, it's shiny, which makes it even more historical. And um, and, of course, they didn't have these type of planes back then because, well, they did, but they didn't have the small ones like we're showing here. And this right here is in a strut. It's, in fact, a, um, a thing that moves the aileron up and down. And then we have servos under here these big giant gigantic servos under this small box in here and it and this um, active help this makes this one go up and down and this aileron go up and then this when this aileron when this aileron pushes up it goes through here and it goes up onto here and makes them both move so it can turn better because it needs more turning since it's such a huge thing plane yeah and came in this gigantic box well it's not so big but I could fit in it myself and yeah so and then over here we have um, the cow 
and it just goes on like that, kinda. See, I can't put it on properly, but like that, and it's very cool. And it's supposed to look like one of those old-fashioned uh, things, um, whatever you call it. And then the propeller kind of goes on like this, and it's really cool. And so there you are, the biplane that loved to fly.